In today's video, we're going to be looking at the question of whether or not helicopters are doomed in the face of engine failure. Contrary to popular belief, in the event of an engine failure, a helicopter can actually glide and land safely due to a state of flight known as auto rotation. It's actually even safer than an airplane engine failure due to the speed at which helicopters can land at. While a small private airplane actually only needs about 50 knots to land, a large commercial airliner needs about 160. Compare those airspeeds to a helicopter's minimum speed it takes to land, and you can see why it's much safer. But to understand auto rotation, we need to learn how helicopters normally fly, as well as fly when auto rotation is in use. In a very simplified rundown, the rotary wing of the helicopter is shaped and functions like that of an airplane wing. As the helicopter's engine moves the rotary wing through the air, it creates lift. Lift can be simply defined as the force that acts upon the airfoil, which is actually the shape of the wing, while it's moving through the air. The unique shape of a wing creates an area of low pressure above and an area of high pressure below. The area of high pressure below the wing forces the wing up into the area of low pressure, creating lift. But to actually get the helicopter up into the air, the pilot pulls a lever known as the collective pitch. The pilot uses the collective pitch lever to angle the rotary blade upward to create lift, or downwards to create descent. The collective pitch lever and its functions are very important to know for the remaining of this video, so make sure you retain this information. Anyways, in normal helicopter flight, the engine spins the rotor through the air, and air is drawn in from above and thrusted downwards, creating lift. But, in the event of engine failure, the pilot has about 1-2 to two seconds to reduce the collective pitch to enter into an immediate descent. The helicopter's descent pushes air up through the rotary wing. This airflow up through the rotary wing is what keeps it spinning fast enough to maintain flight. If the collective pitch is adjusted just right, which means the rotary wing is at just the right angle to receive the airflow, then the pilot has successfully entered into the state of flight known as auto rotation. Now that the helicopter is in a state of auto rotation and is descending, it is key that the pilot maintains a safe rate of descent. The safe rate of descent is different for every situation, but it varies due to a number of factors. These factors are the density altitude, which is the density of the air around the helicopter, the gross weight of the helicopter, which is basically just the weight of the helicopter, the rotor rotational speed, which is the revolutions per minute that the rotary wing makes, and finally, forward airspeed. Dependent upon these factors, there is a certain forward airspeed for every helicopter that creates the slowest and safest descent during auto rotation. This forward airspeed usually varies anywhere from 50 to 90 knots. As the helicopter continues its descent and nears the ground, it is time for the pilot to perform the landing procedure. When the helicopter is about 30 to 50 feet off of the ground, the pilot pulls back the collective pitch, flaring the aircraft's nose. He does this so that the kinetic energy keeping the rotary wing moving during flight can be transformed into thrust energy to slow the helicopter down to a safe landing speed. Remember that the law of conservation of energy states that energy cannot be created or destroyed. So basically, since the wing is not needed anymore to keep the helicopter in flight, the pilot transfers the kinetic energy that was in the wing to keep it moving into thrust energy to slow the helicopter down to a safe landing speed. An experienced helicopter pilot can land the helicopter as if there was almost no engine failure at all. Even if it happens to be a rough landing, the helicopter's landing gear are designed to absorb a substantial amount of shock. If the pilot has performed the auto rotation correctly, people can walk away with little to no harm. This was a very simplified rundown of how helicopters can use auto rotation to avoid serious crashes. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Leave a comment below if you have a question or any recommendations for future videos. Stay tuned and we'll see you soon.